Flat roof. Pricing a flat roof is really simple. We just enter in the basic measurements and the programme will work out everything that we need. The five bedroom house that we're pricing doesn't have a flat roof. So we'll enter one in so we can see how this section and the roof covering section that follows it works. After we've looked at the guttering section, we'll remove it from our quote. OK, here's the plan that we're working from. So we know that we've already entered all the sections of this roof in the roof structure section. But we'll use the dimensions of this section here, our roof over lounge. We'll enter it in again as if it is actually a flat roof. Entering flat roof. OK, calculating the costs for a flat roof is really straightforward. We just need to tell the programme the dimensions of the flat roof or flat roof sections that we'll be doing. This is the roof section that we're going to enter in here. The joists will be going this way. They're five linear metres. But we are going to have soffit, so we need to allow for this. In the length box, we'll enter 5.3. Next, we need to tell the programme the width. Let's click this info icon. The pictorial reference in this thumbnail shows us that the width we enter needs to be the total width of the entire flat roof, not just the joist area. So if we've got gable ladders on one end, we need to include that in the measurement that we enter into the width box. The programme will take care of the number of joists. The text here provides further explanation of this. By default, bridging noggins are allowed. The length of them is shown here. If, for example, we were putting our flat roof in a corner, we wouldn't need the bridging noggins on this side, so we'd set this number to zero. The NHE Plus would then automatically work out exactly what we would need from this information. So it would allow for the joists going up to the wall on this side, and an overhang on it wouldn't be allowed. The roof section that we're pricing only has a wall here, so overhang will be required on both sides. But whatever the positioning of the flat roof, if it's surrounded by two walls, three walls, one wall or no walls, just adjust any overhangs that aren't needed and enter in the width of the flat roof as a whole. Let's close this. The walls are six metres and we want a 300mm overhang on each side. So we'll enter 6.6 .6 linear metres in the width box. Everything for this flat roof is instantly worked out. We're also provided with a cutting list. This blue text tells us the quantity of joists that we're going to need. Remember, if we just click on the width question mark and thumbnail again, the program has looked at the width in these yellow boxes. It knows that these aren't part of the joist bay area. So it deducted this when working out the quantity of joists that will be needed for the bay. To adjust the material, just use the drop-down menu. The centres can be changed. If we adjust these to 0.4, see, the cutting list automatically recalculates to allow for this. Flat roof items. When we enter the dimensions of our flat roof, the program instantly calculates everything we'll need. Let's take a look at what it's worked out. The wall plate is here. The programs work this out for us. As the text here explains, it's based on the width of the entered sections. The program assumes that wall plate will be required for each end of the joist, so multiplies the width by 2. The calculation is in the yellow box, so we can change this if we want. We only require wall plate on one side of this roof. So we'll adjust this to six linear metres. The materials for our joists are here. We've only entered one section of flat roof, but if more are entered, the programme shows the joists for each section independently. We can see the number of linear metres that will be needed. We'll notice that the material is in a white box. If we want to change it, we need to go back to where we entered the flat roof section in and adjust it in there in the yellow drop-down menu. Joist hangers to one end are here. We can see the quantity, Wastage is allowed in here. If we want joist hangers to both ends, we just make sure this box is ticked and the hangers for the other end are automatically worked out. We can change the type of hanger by using the drop down menu. We don't require hangers on both ends, so we will just untick this. Instantly the costs are removed. Solid noggins are worked out for us. Here's the quantity. These are calculated based on the restraint straps. If we click the restraint strap question mark, we can see that the restraint strap centres are two linear metres. The length of our roof is 5.4, therefore we'll need two rows of noggins. Just to show you, if we change the centres to 3 linear metres, we now only need one row of noggins. The quantities of both items just readjust to match our requirements. We'll change that back. The ladders have been worked out. Let's look at how it's calculating. 
we do have a ladder on both ends. The program knows this due to the width that we entered and the fact that we have a quantity in both the length of noggin boxes. If this wasn't the case, we would just adjust these defaults, like we saw in the entering flat roof section of this movie. So the spacing between the bridging or noggins is set at 0.3. The length of the noggins is 0.55. Just to show you this working, if we change the spacing to 0.4 and 0.4 again, enter it in, the number of linear metres of timber that we will need for our ladders decreases. The fairings are calculated. We can see the quantity and cost information here. Roof sheathing is next. Again, we can view all the details. Cant rail. The quantity is in a yellow box. Let's click the question mark. We can see this is calculating based on the cant rail being fitted to two lengths and one width of our flat roof. This is correct for our roof, but we can change it if we want. We can allow for two layers of insulation if we want. One layer between the joists and one layer on top of the joists. The type of insulation can be adjusted here in the drop down menu and we can switch either of these off if we want. The weather drip is here. If we click the question mark, we can see this is calculated based on the length of fascia. So if we adjust the length of fascia, this will automatically adjust too. Here's the fascia. The default calculation for this is based on there being fascia on all sides of our flat roof. We will notice that the quantity is in a yellow box. We don't require fascia to all sides, just three. So we'll adjust the number of linear metres required by manually overtyping the figure in the yellow box. We'll change this to 19 linear metres. See? Automatically the length of weather drip also changes. We can allow for ply or PSE fascia. We just use the drop down menu, select the type, then choose the material. We will leave this set as plastic. Here's the soffit. If it isn't required, switch it off like this. We do need to check the width of soffit. It is a red box. We'll enter 0.3. The length of soffit is in a yellow box. The text here explains that this is based on the length of fascia that's entered. We can change the length in this yellow box though if we want. Our soffit is set as being plastic. We can switch this to ply or PSE though if we want, by using the drop down menu. We then just select the relevant material from the drop down. Soffit vents are here. We can adjust the type of vent by clicking the question mark. If we click the question mark for wall plate restraint straps, we can see how the program is working them out. We can adjust this spacing if we wish. We can allow for lead work on our flat roof if it's required. For example, if the flat roof is going up against any brickwork. This is a blue box, so it does need our judgement. We'll enter two rolls of lead for this flat roof. Flat roof fixings. All of the fixings for our flat roof have been worked out. The subsection that contains them all is here. The blue text tells us the total for all the fixings that will be required on the roof structure we've entered. By default, this section isn't open. This is to help keep the pricing sheet as streamlined as possible. If we do want to view and check what's been calculated, it's really easy. Just tick this box, the fixing section opens. There are multiple items in the fixing section, and it's likely that the details of these will be fine-tuned in the master file, rather than each time a quote is produced. So we've got fascia fixings. If we click the question mark, we can see how these are being calculated. By default, it's two fixings to each point, and the centres are 0.6 linear metres, or 600 mil. These are in yellow boxes, so we can adjust them if we want. We can change the material here on the pricing sheet by using the drop down menu. Roof sheathing is here. Again, we can really drill into the detail, see how it's being calculated, and change it if required. The weather drip fixings are worked out based on there being one every 900 millimetres. This is fully adjustable. We can look into this level of detail for each fixing if we want. So the cant rail, solid bridging, the ladders, and so on. All of the default settings can be changed. As mentioned at the start, we'd be unlikely to view these settings every time we priced a job, but we can set them in our master file to our preferences if we wish. And they will calculate like that every time we do a quote. We'll just close this section now. Extra row and totals. As we've seen, all of the common and not so common items that may be needed for our flat roof construction are in this section of our pricing sheet. But if there's an item or task that we need to allow for that isn't listed, we can add it in. We just click the extra row button that's located here and follow the built-in instructions. Or we can click this info icon. We're provided with information about adding an extra row. The totals for our flat roof are here. So our materials, hours, labor, an overall total. We can view the summary of this section if we want. We just click this button. 
we're taken to the summary sheet where we can see a snapshot of the costs and hours. If we click this button, we'll be taken back to the top of the flat roof section.